Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute I feel like since I just kind of sat down and did one of my normal kind of videos. So today as you can tell from the title I'm just going to get ready with you and I am going to chat with you and catch up about a few things. I had a couple of you on Instagram stories send in questions that you wanted me to talk about. I just kind of feel like lately like I've really been trying to strategize my YouTube channel lately which I'm not sure if you can tell that that's what I'm doing but you know trying to do a couple more like more searched videos and really try to optimize them and make them useful. I've kind of just been playing into, well, first of all, what you guys would want to see, but also just videos that I think would perform the best and help my channel grow. Um, if you don't know already, I'm a full-time content creator here in New York, and I'm always looking for more projects to take on and more people to work with, so having more exposure is obviously beneficial in that way, but sometimes I don't always get to do the kind of other videos I enjoy doing. You know, I love doing the vlogs and bringing you guys along with me um, in my life as a freelancer in New York City and if you follow along on Instagram you obviously get a daily dose of that already but I also just wanted to you know put some makeup on today catch up with you guys so that's the plan that's what we're gonna do and let's dive into today's makeup look so today's makeup look is just going to kind of be a lot of everyday products that I've been using and loving lately I don't think I've filmed an everyday makeup video in at least a year so this will kind of just be a catching up of a no makeup makeup kind of everyday standard look that I like to do for myself. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee first. This is my Tarte Poreless Mattifying Primer. I've been enjoying this. It actually, even though it's mattifying, definitely is still hydrating, which is always good for me, especially if I'm going to apply a slightly more full coverage foundation, which is what I'm going to do today. It has a really interesting texture to it. No smell though, which I think is a good thing. I think it's a weird one primers smell like too intensely. I'm going to go in with my foundation now. This is the Hourglass Vanish Stick. I wear the color Shell and I'm going to apply it with my Sigma 3D HD Kabuki brush. As far as stick foundation goes, I find that that is my preferred method is to use kind of a brush. But while I blend this in, I'm gonna go ahead and start answering some of the questions you guys sent in. So the first one I got is what is your go-to statement piece and I love this question because I feel like especially as like a fashion and style blogger there's sometimes a lot of pressure to keep up with you know hauls and trends and all of that kind of stuff that you feel like you have to constantly be adding new stuff into the mix and you don't always necessarily feel like you're getting wear out of stuff so statement in that sense can be kind of an interesting word I think my favorite statement kind of look for summer is definitely a jumpsuit, like a really fun pattern, well-fitting go-to jumpsuit. I just feel like if you roll up to a party or you roll up to that picnic in Central Park and you're wearing like such a cool outfit just with a jumpsuit, your hair up and like a necklace, I feel like that is such an easy outfit to wear. But then for winter, I would definitely say a statement coat, um, which is not always something I would spend my own money on. For example, my like long line orange coat that you guys have probably seen on Instagram was gifted to me a few seasons ago, but that's something that like, it, it, it makes your whole outfit. Like I always get stopped and someone always says something to me about it or if I'm going to meet a friend, there's always some kind of commentary about the coat. Let's move on to concealer now. I'm going to be using Rihanna's Fenty Beauty Concealer in the shade 160. Um, when I previously had the foundation, I wore the shade 170. So if you're looking for your concealer match, I would recommend checking the shade up just for that more brightening kind of coverage rather than kind of matching the shade exactly. Is there a specific area of the city that you prefer to work in? This is a great question. Let me just... So as you guys probably already know, slash as I mentioned earlier, I am a freelancer here in New York, which means that I could work from a variety of places. So today I'm just planning on being here, working from home. You know, sometimes I'll have kind of sporadic meetings where I'll need to either have like a meeting in the morning and then an afternoon and then there's like this awkward in-between time where it's like well do I go back home probably not because it might be a little far to come back home if I'm already like in the city and then I only have a couple of hours between my next two things so one thing that I've been really loving lately is this app that I've been partnering with called spacious basically it is a drop-in workspace and I've really been enjoying the flexibility of that as well um, generally I work from the spacious flagship location at Union Square I would say is my favorite one right now but yesterday I had to pop into a location in Soho so that was at 
the Bombay Bread Bar, and that was one of the restaurant ones. And then I also have a whole blog post about the best coffee shops for freelancers. So if you're also a freelancer, I will link it down below so you can go give that a read and see what some of my other favorite spots are for getting work done in New York City. I'm going to apply some bronzer because I'm looking hella pale in this natural gloomy light that's coming in today. So I'm going to apply the Wet n Wild Color Icon bronzer in the shade Ticket to Brazil. Thank you, Alana Davison, for this recommendation. I'm using my Sigma Duo Fiber F50 brush. Um, and then the next question was, what are your favorite places to shoot in New York City? I actually find it funny how much this has changed over the years. Like, when I was first working at Nylon and Interview, both of their offices were in Soho and actually in the same building, which is another story. But I always really loved just popping out of the office during my lunch break with whatever friend or coworker was around to help me out and shooting just anything in Soho, like just any kind of basic cobblestone street, white background. I just was like very into the vibe and aesthetic of it. And I'm actually kind of grateful that I have expanded to other neighborhoods as well. I still love a good Soho shot, don't get me wrong. Um, and I've finally gotten over the PTSD of walking by my old office. There are a lot of spots also that I generally avoid, like touristy spots, because I have lived here now for five or almost six years, and I grew up in New Jersey, so I never really... Like I had already done all the touristy stuff, so as an adult, I don't necessarily feel the need to return to it, but some of my favorite shoots recently have been at like super, super touristy locations. If you guys watched my What I Wore This Week vlog from last week, I also included footage of Aaron and I shooting at Grand Central Station, which was hysterical um, because I almost got run over by a city bike. And then Jesse and I took these insane photos at Bethesda Terrace. Like we got up at sunrise and went before anyone else was there. And those kind of more iconic New York spots have been some of my favorite places to shoot lately too. That being said, I haven't done a proper like Brooklyn Bridge shoot in a really long time, so I think that would be next on my list, um, especially now that it's nice out because I've tried to shoot I've actually shot on the Brooklyn Bridge, fun fact, when it was snowing before, like in 2015. It was such a bad idea and I got really sick afterwards. But yeah, definitely some of those more like iconic New York spots. And of course, I've also been loving the fact that now that I'm in Long Island City, I'm not a far walk from the waterfront at all. And that's just a perfect skyline view. So the same can be said for Williamsburg as well. So I've actually really been enjoying mixing highlighters lately. So I have a cream and a liquid highlighter that I've been mixing. This one is from Milk Makeup and this one is Glossier Play in the shade Platinum Rose. This one's in the shade Lit. I think that's their only shade for this highlighter though, I think it's like a universal shade. So what I've actually been doing is kind of taking the applicator and rubbing the product onto my fingers and tapping it on to the high points of my face. And then I go back over with Nightshine and do the exact same thing just for a little extra added glow. One of the questions that was asked which I think is so funny, is what is one thing that, if I could only eat one thing for the rest of my life, what would I eat? And I'm sure half of you are just jumping up and down screaming the answer already because anyone who knows me knows that the answer is pizza. So for night shine, I just do these tiny little dots because it is very pigmented. I also saw Katie Jane Hughes do this on a Glossier Play Live this morning on Instagram. So I am copying her blatantly because why wouldn't I copy everything that that woman does? in her life. I never remember actually to highlight under my brow bone, so this is a big day for me. This is a big deal. And then I do the tiniest bit on nose. Wow. 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 All right, let's put the highlighter away. <laughs> And I need more coffee, because what else is new? Also, this wasn't a question, but I always am curious how people take their coffee. I take mine black, so comment down below how you take your coffee. Gonna move on to brows, no surprise here. I am using the Instant Brow Fix from Thrive Cosmetics in the shade Audrey. Um, and I wanted to answer this next question with a prop. <laughs> my friend Francesca wanted to know what was on my summer reading list. So right now I'm actually halfway through Work Party. So this is Jacqueline Johnson's book. She is the founder and CEO of Create and Cultivate, which is a conference that happens in various cities across America aiming to bring together women and talk about their careers and how they can cultivate their dream lives and all of that kind of stuff. And what I didn't even know is that she actually got laid off from her job. So that was kind of how the book started. She moved across the country to this new job only to get like fired from it. And that kind of led into the spiraling of everything else that happened after that. So it's been really, really great to get to know Jacqueline a little more through this book. I'm on page 116 right now out of like 
2.30 it looks like, so I'm about halfway through it. Um, but I have been obsessed with any kind of career books and nonfiction, so if you have any book recommendations for me kind of in that category, please leave them down below. Um, a couple of other books that I've already read and loved in a similar vein are Amy O'Dell's Tales from the Back Row. She was the former editor of Cosmo.com and is now a freelance writer and editor as well. Um, I also loved Leandra Medine's book, Seeking Love, Finding Overalls, and she is obviously better known as Man Repeller. Another book I read this year that I really liked that I actually passed off to Andrew for him to read next is a networking book. It's by Keith Frazzi and it's called Never Eat Alone. Um, my dad gave it to me to read, so thank you dad for that, I highly enjoyed it. And it's honestly just like, you know, if you're already really comfortable with networking, it probably will just mostly serve as a good refresher to you of things that you could be doing. But if you're uncomfortable with networking and you don't have a lot of experience with it, I would highly recommend checking that book out. It was written, uh, when was it written? It was definitely written in like the 2000s. So there are a couple of references like in your file effects or like other things that don't fully add up make sense in present day and he also like references Donald Trump as like a marketing genius at one point which I don't know if his opinions on that changed but anyway it's still worth a read um, lots of good solid intel in there for people who are wanting to get better at networking I'm gonna move on to eyeshadow now and by eyeshadow I actually mean the hourglass bronzer in this ambient lighting palette uh, I have also been stealing this from Alana Davison and just applying a kind of shade of shimmery bronzer all over my lid rather than like an eyeshadow. I just have been really enjoying the effect of it. Before I do that though, I'm just gonna add some Smashbox 24 hour primer to my lids so that it stays on all day. Logan wants to know where are my favorite places to eat in New York? And I know she just moved here, so welcome to New York, Logan. Um, I don't even know where to begin with this. Let me think about this for a second. I do have a bunch of New York City neighborhood guides on my blog, so I will put a link to the tag of that page and then you can like sort things by specific neighborhood because I do list my recommendations. One of my favorite places to get brunch, which I haven't been to in forever, is called Pardon My French in the East Village. Um, they do have a bottomless option. It is cash only. They have all of the like classic brunch dishes. So if you want pancakes, if you want waffles, if you want eggs benedict, it's still a really cute place and a cute vibe. And I think it's pretty reasonable for considering that brunch in New York is really expensive. Another place that I went really recently for brunch is Sisters. Um, that's more in like the Clinton Hill area of Brooklyn. Definitely worth the visit. It's adorable and the food is really great. I also am just a big fan of Shake Shack. I know it's like fast food, but there's nothing better than a Shake Shack burger and vanilla milkshake on a summer's day. Go to the Madison Square Park location if it's a nice day. That's such a fun place to eat. Here in Long Island City, I also really like the food at Alewife Tap Room. That's one place we've been and Woodbines. I've been back there like three times since I've moved here and that's saying something for me who like loves exploring new places in a neighborhood so um, Woodbines also has a brunch which is great. I'm going to apply my mascara now. This is the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. I'm gonna take another sip of my coffee and next answer what are your favorite New York summer activities because there's so much to do here during the summer. So this isn't one of my favorite activities because I've never done it and I say every year that I'm going to and I have not done it yet but every Monday in the city Bryant Park screens free movies so I think they usually start around like sunset, but you want to get there early to get a spot and you can bring like a picnic basket. Um, I don't think you're technically allowed to bring alcohol, but if you wanted to sneak some wine, I'm sure you could. I always say I'm going to do it and I never do. So I would love to actually make that happen this summer. Otherwise, I honestly love the idea of just getting brunch, going to Central Park, walking around. I feel like that is always kind of a good thing to do. A couple weekends ago also, Andrew and I went to Roosevelt Island. If you haven't been there yet, definitely worth checking out. If you're coming from Manhattan, you can take the tram. If you're coming from Williamsburg or Long Island City, you could take the ferry. Um, both cost you the same amount as a subway swipe, although the ferry you have to buy your ticket separately. And I would definitely just recommend like going to Roosevelt Island and then going down to the FDR for Freedoms Park really really gorgeous and calm and great views of the city 
Can't say too much about what else there is to do on Roosevelt Island. I feel like you could kind of go hang out in the park for a couple hours and then co go back to either Brooklyn or Manhattan and grab food from there. Williamsburg opened Domino Park last year. That is another great spot. Um, also now being in Long Island City too. I always try to go to the waterfront whenever I can. Who doesn't love a good rooftop? If you haven't been to the rooftop at Italy, it's super crowded but worth going, really cute. I would just go once for something like that but another rooftop that I really like going to is Rare in Murray Hill area. It's usually pretty calm and quiet, the drinks are reasonably priced, and you can go like after happy hour and watch the sunset with your friends, and uh, just what a dream. Uh, who doesn't love New York in the summer, aside from the absolutely unbearable humidity? It's literally amazing. All right, and this is all of the makeup that I wanted to put on my face today. Kind of a nice low-key natural look and giving you guys a look at some of the products that I've been using lately. And I just want to answer the last question, which is asked by one of my best friends from high school, Julia. She wants to know if I could tell my middle school or high school self anything, what would it be? So I've always been a very self-confident person. I think that's like 50% credit to my education, like my early education, and then 50% credit due to my parents who have always been super supportive of me but since I've always been really confident I feel like you know nothing kind of phased me in like middle school and high school I was a huge theater nerd and would be like singing in the hallway or just I don't know wearing like crazy outfits to high school with like my hair fully curled and people being like what who is she getting dressed up for and it's like I don't know myself I just like like it so I would honestly just tell myself to like trust what you're doing and stay the course like I have no regrets about that time in my life things that are meant to happen will happen so just don't stress and keep doing keep doing what you're doing because you're doing good. All right, you guys, and here is the finished look. And I hope you enjoyed listening to me answer a couple of your questions too. Thank you so much to anyone who sent in questions. Also, always feel free to DM me or message me or send me an email. Like, I really, I love getting emails from people too. All of the ways to reach me are linked down below in the description box. So come say hello on social media or anywhere else. Please also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. New videos every Monday and Friday and I think that's just about everything so I hope you enjoyed this have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys again in my next one bye